Hey guys, uh, I don't usually do tutorials about stuff, but I'm making a tutorial for my friend Stara because she is a bean. Smile, la you Stara. Okay, anyway. <laughs> uh, today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to do blend shapes, like hair switches. So this is how I handle hair switches in um, VR chat. Uh, obviously, there's a bit more to it because obviously you have to set up the animations, the toggles, stuff like that, dynamic bones or rotation constraints, which is what I like to do recently. Um, you have to set all that up in Unity. Just to let you know, uh, if you are going to be doing it this way, when you do get to Unity, if you are using parent constraints, uh, not parent constraints, rotation constraints or dynamic bones to have the hair moving, which, you know, a lot of people do because you don't really want static hair. Um, if you are going to be using those, make sure that whenever you use the blend shapes, always disable the dynamic bones or rotation constraints that you are not currently using. So I would have three different setups, one for the... well, I would have four different setups, one for the fringe, one for the short hair, one for the bun, and then one for the long hair. If I only had the short hair active, I would disable the fringe, the bun, and the long hair dynamic bones or rotation constraints. Uh, but then I would keep the ones for the short hair active. Make sure you always remember to do that because otherwise, using this uh, method to switch hair, your hair will still be moving inside of your head and that can cause clipping through the face uh, when you're moving around. Go into edit mode, go basis, material, select one of the hairstyles, P to separate, rename, separate all of your hairstyles, rename them all. Go to shape keys in the data section and delete all of the blend shapes that you have for the hair only. Once you've deleted all of the blend shapes for each of the pieces of hair, make a new basis and also a new no whatever hairstyle. Click no bun and go to edit mode. Press A to select all. Use the scaling tool to scale all three of the axes down to a very small number. And then move this piece of the hair into the face and then proceed to do the same with all the rest of the hairstyles. Go into object mode, show all of the hairs, go to the cat's plugin, model options, join mesh all. Turn on all of the blend shapes to show the hair that you want and not the hair that you don't want. Make sure there are no other blend shapes active. Go to the black box and create a new shape from mix. Rename this to whatever the hairstyle is. Repeat this step for all of the hairstyles. Delete all of the shape keys that you created at the beginning, so in my case it would be no short, no bun, no fringe, no long. Now you have your shape keys. Anyway, now that we've got that out of the way, Let's start actually doing shit. Obviously, I've already got a pre-made base together. Um, all of this stuff is already uh, existing. Actually, I, I actually have the um, blend shapes already made, but I can just quickly delete them. So, I'm going to start off going into edit mode. Uh, make sure you do everything on the basis as well, just to make things easier. Uh, I'm going to go over to my materials, because I know that all of my hairstyles have different materials. Um, the only difference is that we're going to have to do a bit of tweaking with the fringe and the long hair because they use the same material. But we'll start off by separating all the three different hairstyles or however many hairstyles you have. So I'm going to go hair strands. I know this is my short hair style. Uh, click select. And it's only selecting the parts of the hair which are using that texture, which uh, that material, which is obviously the short hair. I'm going to click P and selection. And now that is a separate mesh. I'm going to just rename it short hair so I know what I'm working with. Go back to body, which is everything else. Uh, I suggest turning off the stuff that you've already separated just so you can get a better view of what you're looking at. Uh, back into edit mode. 
I know that the hairpin, hair updo and hair base is the entirety of the back of the hair. Obviously you might need to experiment with this a bit on your base depending on what textures you use, what hairstyles you're using, blah blah blah. Um, but I've been working with this base for quite a number of months now so I know it like the back of my hand. Uh, I'm gonna press P selection and now we have the bun separate from the body. I'm gonna turn that off. Uh, and now we're back to the long hair style, which I said that we would need to do a bit of tweaking for. Uh, I like to go to wireframe just so that I can see what I'm dealing with. So I want to click back here. Now you can see that these two use the same texture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. We're going to try and separate the fringe first. So I'm going to hover over a vertice and I'm going to do shift L and then I'm going to do it again over here. Shift L. Sometimes it doesn't like it. And every time you click Shift L, it's going to remove the selection from whatever vertices that that vertice is connected to. So anything in that object is going to get deselected. Obviously, the, this side of the hair is not connected to that strand that I just deselected. So there we go. The reason I like to use wireframe is that uh, you can obviously see straight through to the other side and anything you do to this side will also happen all the way through. Uh, it's just easier to work with. Um, okay, so another tip is um, rotating. Obviously you can use the, the middle mouse button, the scroll wheel to just move it around like this and move it as you please with the, you know, you probably know all that stuff, right? But if you want to just quickly maneuver around, like looking to the sides and stuff, uh, I suggest using the number pad. Uh, one gives you a front view, three gives you a side view, seven gives you a top down view, so bid's eye view. Uh, then nine will flip. Nine flips, whatever it is. So if I'm on the top down view and I want to switch to the bottom down view, I just click nine. If I go to the front view and I want to see the back, I can click nine. If I want a view of the left side of the model rather than the right, I can click nine. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the front view. Uh, also, there's the arrow keys, which you can use to do little adjustments to what angle you're looking at, up, down. And to get the 2D, 3D switch, you just press 5. And all of this is happening on the on the number pad. And when I say arrows, I mean the arrows on the number pad, not the arrow keys. Arrow keys will not do anything. Well, nothing in terms of rotating anyway. So let's go back into 2D view. So you can see that I have the entirety of the fringe selected. I also need to select the sides because that these bangs are part of my fringe. Um, and I'm going to do P separate. I'm going to go back to my material view just so I can see what I'm working with. All right. Uh, so now we have the fringe deselected. Now this isn't it. I also need to remove the back hair from the main body as well. So I can just use the back hair now and obviously because the fringe has been separated I don't need to do anything else with it. I just need to P and then separate. There we go. Now we have all of our pieces of hair separate so we can work on them. Uh, go to the data so it's right next to the materials obviously you can see there. Um, now this is where all of your shape keys are. Shape keys are how we are going to make the hair go away. Um, so these are all of your blend shapes. I've clicked back onto my main body so I can show you these are just the different movements that your model can do using blend shapes um, without changing the original shape of the model. Um, the original shape of the model is called the basis. Make sure you don't mess with this. Now I know that I might be contradicting myself when I say this, but we are going to delete everything. So <laughs> as a result, we're going to delete the basis. Don't delete it first, delete it last. So make sure you go to your blend shape, make sure you are selecting the correct mesh because this will only delete the blend shape on this specific mesh. Um, so if I go through and I just use this little minus key to delete all my blend shapes, now you can see we are left with the basis. Delete that one too, but make sure the basis is always the last one you delete. The reason for this is that if you delete something before the basis, then whatever is left will become the new basis. 
The problem with that is when you finally do delete that shape key, it might edit whatever it is you have left. So if I just make a random shape key, don't mind this, uh, yeah, if I just do that, right? So that's my new shape key, right? If I have that and I delete the basis, this is now my new basis. This is now what the model looks like. Even if I delete that one, that is that is forever changed. Now I'm going to just undo that because <laughs> I don't want that. Um, so you always make sure to get rid of the basis last. However, if there is a problem where for some reason the, um, the model has been changed and this shape key is for some reason in charge now and it's just not supposed to be, um, then the best thing to do is to get the basis back, create a new shape key, and new shape from mix, and then delete everything except that new shape key. Obviously I've kind of done the reverse, I've caused the problem rather than fixing it, but if you already have the problem, you can you can fix it using that. So like, new shape from mix, there, fixed it. Okay, so we're gonna do the- we're gonna delete all the blend shapes from everything else, um, I will speed this up in editing so that you don't have to see it all. Okay, now you are done deleting all the blend shapes from the hair, make sure you don't do it from the body, only from the hair. Um, you still need all of these blend shapes in the body. Uh, okay, so now what we're gonna do for the hair, we are going to create another basis for all four of them, or how many of them many you have. And we're going to make a new blend shape called no whatever it is, right? You can name it whatever you want, but the, we're not keeping these. So I just tend to go no fringe, no bun, no long hair. There we go. Now make sure these are not blend shapes that are named the same as anything in the main body or anywhere else because we are going to be actually merging these back together eventually and it might mess up because the, the blend shapes will combine together to make a new blend shape. Uh, that's just kind of how it happens. Um, so we're going to start off with no bun. I'm going to do a side view, we're going to go into edit mode, make sure you are selected on no bun, not on basis. Anything you do to basis will happen to all of your blend shapes and that will be the new state of the model. Now the easiest way to do this is I suggest you hide the rest of the hair so that you can maneuver, maneuver this easily. I like to go into wireframe but you don't need to. Um, go down here, there is a scale tool. Just do it on one axis and then you'll see these three sliders pop up. I like to do 0.0001 just because I know that's tiny. Control C, and then if you hover over these two boxes and Control V, you'll see these just copy and paste the way that it would normally. So you don't have to go and click in and paste, you can just literally just hover over and just paste. Now make sure you have all three of these boxes selected so that it does it to all axes. And if you just move this down using the translate tool down there. Just kind of move it somewhere you know it's not going to be seen. Obviously I put it in the face. Um, try and keep it nearby where the bone is. Obviously because we're using the hair uh, we will keep it near the head bone so that's why I put it in the face. You could just put it in the head bone but then there's the chance that it could just be seen from like any gaps you have with the ears or anything because I know sometimes I have gaps in my hair because I suck at model making. <laughs> Uh, just try and put it somewhere where no one's going to see it. And now you're going to do this exact same process for all of the other pieces of hair. Now because I put it in the- f the reason we put it in the head is because obviously the mesh will still be moving along with the bone that it is weighted to. Because the hair is weighted to the head, if we were to put it in the neck and then have the head bone move like that way, then it, there's a potential for the hair to kind of stretch out to um, kind of match it, and then it will actually poke out of the neck. So that's why we put it in the head nearby the origin bone. Um, 
Also, if you're wondering how I'm selecting everything, you can go through and do it with the uh, C select, or you can just press the A button. A button will select all. This is the reason I separate the meshes of the hair, um, so that I can just quickly press A and select all of the hair without messing with anything else. So if I go back into material, now you can see that all of the blend shapes work. Yep. So if we go through, make sure that none of the blend shapes are on. And what we're going to do next is we're going to click on our body. We're going to go down to the cats plugin. And we're going to just join all meshes. Now, this is the reason that these are not going to be staying. We are going to decide what hairstyle we want to start with. So I'm going to start with the short hairstyle. So we're going to get rid of the bun, we're going to get rid of the fringe, get rid of the long hair. So now all that is left is the short hair. Now if you go down to this black arrow here and you click New Shape from Mix. Short hair. Now click this button, this little X will turn off all of the blend shapes, set all the blend shapes to zero so you don't have any active. And if you put that value up, you can see that it is now doing two blend shapes at the same time. It is doing, well no, it's doing three actually. It's doing no long, no fringe, and no bun all in a singular blend shape. So now all we have left is the, the short hair. Now you can do this again uh, with no short, no bun to make the long hair. We'll go back down and new shape from mix. And then if we do uh, no long, no short. <laughs> Bless me. Um, then we have the bun. New shape key from mix. Now finally, to clean up, we get rid of no short, no bun, no fringe, no long. Press that X to make sure nothing's selected. Then we have our short hair. We have our long hair. And we have our bun. Now make sure you don't go uh, combining these because you can have issues like this where it's telling, uh, it's transforming it double, which will actually uh, do the reverse. It's kind of like an inverter, really. So if you tell it to shrink itself, and then you do another shape key, which tells it to shrink itself by the same value, it's going to end up shrinking itself in the inverse way. So it's going to actually grow back to its original size, but in the inverse position. So you can see that it's the wrong way around entirely. But yeah, that's how you do blend shapes. Blend shape hair changes, you know? Smile! I would smile, but yeah, I'm not going through and making that blend shape and smile. <laughs> anyway, I suck at tutorials, but I hope this one helped somewhat. I bet there is a better way to do this. They prob yeah, there's a 100% better way to do this, but frankly, this is the way that I use, this is the way that works best for me. Uh, yeah. Stay sharp, slice your problems, and I'll see you in the next video, which I doubt will be a tutorial, because this is not my normal content. <laughs> From the Silent Swordswoman. Bye-bye!